HITC Sport. All right, so the African Nations Cup is seen as the big boogeyman potential threat to the Premier League. I mean, the way the media talks about this competition, you'd swear it was about to utterly tear through the division with a bread knife. That suddenly, with the country's airports now filling up with African millionaires, that suddenly the title race will be disrupted, that clubs are about to accept relegation, that is going to utterly ruin the fabric of the season. Well, okay, then let's, let's just see, okay? Let's investigate this. I'm going to take a look at every Premier League club and just give a rating by severity of how hard it's going to hit your club. From destroyed to worrying to could be worse and then to meh of how badly the African Nations Cup is going to ruin your season. All right, let's go. Arsenal could be worse. Uh, okay, I'm guessing last summer. Arsenal fans would have looked at the upcoming African Nations Cup and felt like pouring petrol in their eyes. Ozzy, go back to July. Tell an Arsenal fan during the summer that mid-season they have the likes of Pierre Mbappé and Nicolas Pepe ripped out of their team for a month and it'd be like trying to mentally prepare for your children going off to spend January locked in Hannibal Lecter's fridge but no it's actually not that bad Aubameyang is banished from the team anyway to such a point where he's probably not even allowed to order a sandwich in the canteen so it doesn't really matter that Gabon are stealing him for a few weeks all it does slow down any transfer that he might have in January. Now what else? Same with Pepe when he leaves for the Ivory Coast. I'm sure he'll miss the cup games against Nottingham Forest and Liverpool but other than that, who really cares? All this means is that Charlie Patino is suddenly going to take his place on the bench of the Premier League. Sure, Mohamed El Neni is going to the tournament with Egypt but again, he's a chunk of ageing Deadwood who only ever plays against Man United. So an Arsenal fan being upset about losing him is the equivalent of you being distraught over misplacing your bag of pubic hair. The only player they will actually miss is Thomas Partey when he did them for Ghana. I mean, he'll miss the North London Derby, so that is a blow. But overall, I don't think the Arsenal fans will be too devastated. I mean, they'll probably have to buff up the midfield for a month, though. So yeah, maybe a low move for Aaron Ramsey. But other than that, it's fine. As the Villa, meh. Who cares? All Aston Villa are going to lose is Bertrand Triori to Burkina Faso and Trezeguet with Egypt. Two luxury footballers from Steven Gerrard probably values about as much as he does chicken pox and a scrotum. Trezeguet is just an injury prone crumpled lump of butter while Triori barely makes the matchday squad. So losing them for a few weeks, I think Stevie G will survive. Brentford could be worse. Okay, yes, Brentford only losing one player, but I'm not going to write this one off as a meh because it happens to be their 10 million pound summer signing. You know, midfield enforcer. Are Frank Onyeka, who's off to the tournament in Nigeria. Listen, it is a blow, okay? And right now I'm guessing that Thomas Frank is probably trying to hide his passport in a bit. But potentially, if Nigeria utterly spluttered like a diabetic duck, somehow finishing bottom of a group featuring Sudan and Guinea Bissau, then that all Onyeka will be missing is the FA Cup trip to Port Vale and a Premier League visit to Anfield. That wouldn't be too bad. So Aussie Brentford fans, it's good news. Because Nigeria right now is in a crisis. For example, only two weeks ago they were trying to beg Jose Mourinho to leave Roma. I'm sorry, convincing one of the best coaches in the world to leave Serie A to then coach the likes of Odi and Gallo and a wet cabbage like Alex and Wobie, you might as well have asked him to shove a pitchfork down his throat. It wasn't going to happen. Their current manager is Augustin Egovon, whose CV is about as inspiring as a Katie Price autobiography. Christoph, his last job was four years ago when he was sacked by something called Sunshine Stars. That honestly sounds like a children's cereal box sponsored by the Teletubbies. I mean, what else? Short stints in charge of Black Leopards, Sharks FC, Ben insurance, they sound like a type of Saudi Arabian bank. And as a player, he was just some fat left back for the likes of Sacramento Scorpions, Torpedo Bosco, and Slima Wanderers in Malta, where he was probably paid in bags of popcorn. Oz, yes, this is a talented Nigerian squad, but I don't care. You can give the best airplane in the world to someone blind in both eyes, and they're still getting flown into a bridge. So, fingers crossed for Brentford's sake. Brighton worrying. So, Brighton are only missing two players. 20-year-old reserve striker Ulrich Enemi Ella, he's going to the tournament with Gabon, I'm guessing Graham Potter barely even knows who he is. But the big one, Ives Besuma is back in the Mali squad after a three-year absence. Now listen, Brighton fans can't say that they haven't been given warning for this. During the summer, the fans are bracing themselves for their best midfielder to wind up at Liverpool as a replacement for Gini Vinaldo. And even in Halloween, the tabloids were hinting that he was about to spend the next six months sleeping in a prison cell. Listen, Brighton have some important games coming up against Everton, West Brom, a derby day with Crystal Palace, and a trip to Leicester. So Besuma... He will be a loss. Burnley worrying. Imagine being a Burnley fan. These men, they don't ask for much. Maxwell Cornet was a surreal summer signing. Exciting signing from Leon last summer. I mean, the turf more faithful probably thought this was too good to be true. And yes, he does have hamstrings made of cheese. And he's in probably in danger of pulling his glutes by sitting on the couch or opening a box of cornflakes. But still, when he plays, he looks spectacular, rifling in wonder goals. But now, the Ivory Coast are depriving Burnley of their shiny new toy for a month. And lad, there's no danger of him coming home early 
it either because Ivory Coast and a group of Equatorial Guinea, Algeria and Sierra Leone. I mean, come on! If the Ivorians reach the final, then Cornet will wind up missing four games for Burnley. I mean, the only comfort is that these games are against Leicester, Arsenal and Man United, so they're not exactly relegation six pointers, but still. Chelsea worrying. Okay, again, this could be worse for Chelsea because thankfully for them, Morocco coach Vahid Halid Hodzic has left Hakim Ziyech at home, despite him being comfortably the country's most talented footballer. I, mean, I don't care if he does a poor discipline. I I don't care if Ziyech does turn up late for training. I don't even care if he sticks your hamster in a toaster. He is Morocco's best player. Just what? Anyway, that is good news for Chelsea. The bad news is that Edouard Mendy is going to the tournament with Senegal. I mean, considering he was born and raised in France, I'm guessing right now the Chelsea fans are close to ripping up chunks of their own hair in frustration. But Chelsea are in a better position than most clubs who happen to lose their number one goalie for a month because their second in command just happens to be the most expensive goalkeeper in the history of the sport. And Christ, well, Kepa Aris Blaga is not some turkey brain pigeon of a goalie, all right? I mean, some people seem to think that he's a Spanish Mignolet, but lads, only two years ago, he was keeping David Gea out of the Spain team. Can we stop the myth that he has wrists made of sponge cake? He's not that bad. Listen, Mendy will miss three cup games in a row. Games that Kepa was going to play anyway. And, and, and even then, Christ, well, you could go down your local Tesco's, grab anyone with a fat Santa Claus with children sitting on their lap. You could stick them in goal, and he would still keep a Chelsea clean sheet against Chesterfield. But Mendy will miss a title decider away at the Etihad. And this is a massive blow. Price well, this man kept a clean sheet against Man City in the Champions League final. Kep, on the other hand, still has nightmares of conceding six of this ground. Make no mistake about it, that poor boy will probably spend the morning of the 15th spewing up his weedos and milk under the changing room floor. And Mendy will probably miss the follow-up game against Tottenham at home. So again, Harry Kane is just gonna eye up Kepa as if he's a chunk of steak. And lads, if Senegal reached the final on the 6th of February, Mendy will have to fly from Cameroon to London only to fly back out of Saudi Arabia for the FIFA Club World Cup. On the 9th of February. That's about 26 hours on the plane. He'll probably have watched Toy Story about six goddamn times. And after three consecutive hours of chewing on plastic airplane shepherd's pie in a box. Oh, he's probably gonna feel like vomiting up his spleen. Ozzy, when he gets off that plane for the FIFA Club World Cup, he's going to look like something under the Walking Dead. Where's the palace destroyed? Where's the palace fans supposed to be so demoralized right now? Last month, their talisman Wilfred Sa asked not to join up with the Ivory Coast. It looked like his annoying, inconvenient international career was about to be stuffed in a bin. Palace fans were probably jumping around the living room. Well, guess what? Not only is he going to the African Nations Cup, but the hard-working Jordan Ayew, despite having the end product of a carrot, is flying out with Ghana while Cheku Kiate is teaming up with Senegal. Bit ironic that Patrick Vieira, after having snubbed the chance to represent Senegal in these types of tournaments as a player, has just watched his squad be ripped apart for this tournament mid-season. I mean, these are key, key players. They're about to miss a cup game with Millwall, then the derby with Brighton, and a home game with Liverpool. I mean, that Brighton game is so important, and without a spark like Zaha, without Ayu, suddenly you're going to be relying on Jeffrey Schlupp on the goddamn wing. Oh, it's, it's tough. Everton, meh. Who cares? Everton are losing Alex Iwobi to Nigeria for a month. You know, JJ Okocha's nephew, who yeah, is quite skillful, but clearly has the footballing brain of a napkin. Christ, well, Rafa Benitez is a man who used to pick Jermaine Pennant every week, and yet here he is, being a 30 million pound buy like Alex Iwobi, and treats him as if he's just the Everton work experience kid. Oh, the Everton, you won't miss Iwobi at all. Leeds, meh. Yeah, Leeds don't have any African players, and thank Christ for that, because can you imagine I don't think the lead squad can take any more absentees. I mean, imagine if someone like Rafinha wasn't from Brazil, but instead Cameroon. Then right now, Leeds fans are probably already booking championship trips to Sunderland next year. Leicester destroyed. Brendan Rodgers must feel like ripping off his ears. He is losing four players this month. Okay, the injury prone Napoli's Mendy is jetting off at Senegal. I mean, who really cares about that? But Kalidji Ihi and Atchua, Wilfred and Didi. Key first team players are linking up in Nigeria, and Daniel Amarty is flying out of Ghana. This could rip your season into wet confetti. They're missing an FA Cup home game with Watford. Again, you are the holders of that competition, so you need to win that match. Then you have a tough trip to Burnley. Then a home match with Brighton. Honestly, Leicester still have an outside chance of qualifying for Europe, but by February, they can be stuffed halfway down the league with Rodgers crying to a bowl of porridge. And who knows, maybe even threatened with the sack. Liverpool destroyed. Liverpool fans, you must feel terrified to your soul. You are seeing Mo Salah desert you halfway through a season. Halfway through a world-class season. But it could be worse. He's just gonna miss the EFL Cup semi-final legs against Against Arsenal, but he wouldn't have been wasted in those matches anyway. I mean, he'll miss an FA Cup home tie with Shrewsbury, but you could stick my nan on the wing and you still win the goddamn match. The only real games he'll miss are Brentford at home, but then Christmas.
Crystal Palace away. And not only that, but Abby Kato was missing with Guinea. And Sadio Mane is off with Senegal. Listen, you should be able to see our Brentford at home, but I'm sorry. A crucial trip to Sadar's Park playing a front three of Diogo Jota, Roberto Firmino, and what? Alex Oxley Chamberlain on the wing? Or Takumi Minamino? This could realistically chew your title challenge into wet shreds. This could be like Cristian Bull of 2014. Christ above. Man City met. Listen, I know that Riyad Mahrez is a world class footballer, but I think Man City could do without him for a month. Yes, he's leaving with Algeria, but honestly, Mahrez could have been sold in the summer for half a tin of big beans, and City would still be top of the Premier League. Mahrez will miss an epic up trip to Swindon, a home clash with Chelsea, and a visit to Southampton. I think Man City will be fine. Man United met. Yeah, the only player Manchester United are missing is going to be Eric Bai. I mean, if Rafa Varane was still nursing a wet pie of a foot on the sidelines, then sure. Then he would be a miss, but Christ above. I mean, then Ralph Rannick would probably be forced to acknowledge the existence of Phil Jones. But come on, the absence of Bai for a month? Uh, who cares? Newcastle met. Again, Newcastle have no African players. Next. Southampton, meh. Listen, Southampton are losing a tricky winger like Moussa Gineppo to Mali for a month. But again, that guy's only played 20 minutes of football since mid-October anyway. Rafa Snoodle clearly thinks that he does reliable as a condom made out of a crisp packet. I mean, it doesn't really matter. They won't miss him. Next, Tottenham, meh. Again, no Tottenham players heading into this tournament either, so... Next, Watford destroys. The African Nations Cup is relegating Watford. I mean, most teams in the Premier League will cope with this tournament. Sure, it's an inconvenient headache for a lot of managers, but it's not exactly the equivalent of finding a bomb in the canteen toilets now, is it? But this, oh for Watford. This is 100% relegating you as a football club. This will be the month where Claudio Ranieri loses his job. Because I'm sorry, how do you survive this? You're suddenly without Emmanuel Dennis, a man in red hot form with seven goals already. The depth of the squad is gonna take a tumble with left back Adam Messina jetting off with Morocco, meaning that Ranieri is once again gonna have to pick a wet love of pudding like Danny Rose. Who else? Midfield signing Imran Luza is also in the Morocco squad. Center half will choose to come. Yes, he's been an injury prone disaster cake. This season who's currently been dropped ever since doing that YouTube video with Chris MD. But he's still the Nigeria captain. And finally, Watford's best player is Bela Sar is ditching you for Senegal. So your squad depth, your creative spark, and your only source of goals just, just gone for an epic up trip to Leicester. But then crucially, a relegation six-pointer at Newcastle. And then another relegation six-pointer at home to Norwich City. This couldn't be any worse. If you lose both of those Premier League matches without half your squad, then I'm sorry. You are down. West Ham could be worse. Listen, losing Cyber Rabbit to Algeria for a month will hamper David Moyes' plans to qualify for Europe. He is a key player. But still, you can remedy this. Just chuck in a bid for Jesse Lingard on the first week of January and you should be able to cope. Wolves worrying. Wolves are one of the smallest squads in the Premier League. And so losing two center halves, Woody Bowling to Ivory Coast and Roman Sass to Morocco, then I'm sorry, if the club receive any sort of bid from Newcastle for Connor Cody, then don't entertain it. Just throw the computer in the bin because otherwise your excellent defensive record is going to be flushed on a toilet bowl. Anyway, that's what this left me go. What do you think? All right, let me know. How is the African Nations Cup going to affect your squad? Let me know. Are you dreading it? Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.